Hey there, welcome back. So uh, we've built a couple of sounds. We've designed them from scratch, um, and it's been really exciting. It's time to move on and do a few more. So this lecture is all about the trance lead. Now, I understand that that is a pretty generic description of a sound, but I sort of did that on purpose because, um, you know, there there are many different genres and subgenres, each with their own unique uh, trademark sounds, uh, but this is a pretty common classic trancey lead sound that we're going to go for, and then I'll show you some ways that you can tweak it uh, to make it your own. Okay, it's good to just learn the learn the basics and then move forward from there. So first of all, we're going to set up our three oscillators. We're going to activate all three because we want a really huge sound, and um, all of them should be set to sawtooth waves. So if that's your default, make sure you leave it there and the wavetable position will be all the way to the right for this. And what I like to do is take oscillator 2 and pitch it up an octave and oscillator 3 and pitch it down an octave, just like that. And then I'm also going to play with the um, sense here a little bit, just maybe like 5 or 6 semitones, I'm sorry, cents up and down, whatever. Uh, the, you know, the more extreme of uh, a pitch differentiation you have in your spread here, the more hardcore of a lead it will sound like. Okay, so I'm just going to do less than 10 in, in either direction like that. Okay. And so um, we are not going to bother with the modulation oscillator for now. In the noise generator, we're going to set this to bright noise and leave the amp down because we're going to assign a macro control to that later. So right now we sound like this. It already sounds pretty big and full, which is cool, but we're going to do a couple other tricks to get to get to where we really want it to be. I'm going to put this on mono rotate and legato. And I'm also going to increase the unisono to 4. We're going to make it really big and wide. We're going to activate the pitch cutoff under the unisono spread and uh, we're going to slide this fader over to taste so you can start to hear that take shape already and we're going to have to turn this master volume down a little bit so that we are not peaking and you can hear that when I bring this up more, it'll be pretty extreme of a detune sound. But I want something a little bit more pleasing to the ear. Okay. So that's good so far. Next, we're going to deal with the envelope. So I'm going to decrease the attack time, so it's very short. And um, I'm also going to decrease the release time to nothing. And I'm going to drop the sustain level all the way down like this. And the reason for that is I'm going to create some macro controls to let me shape this envelope. So that's what that sounds like now. So 
So I want to decrease that decay till it's just a nice little pluck like that. I'm going to put this key tracking fader up as well. Okay. Now let's add a few effects before we start assigning our macro controls. So the first one I'm going to use is the uh, delay synced. And um, I'm going to put the left delay set to eighth notes. That sounds like that. I like that dry wet spread. Okay. Maybe change this dampening knob a little bit. Maybe about right there. 1030. And then for the master effects number two, uh, you can choose either the dimension expander or the reverb, really whatever uh, feels good to you. The dimension expander you're going to want. Um, a uh, little bit less of a dry wet. And that just sort of widens everything a little bit. Um, or you can put on the reverb. So I like that right now. That sounds that's sounding pretty cool to my ear. And now it's time to assign some of these um, macro controls. So there's a few ways of doing this. One thing that you can do is set um, the macro control to everything. And that way you can create this really cool uh, sweep if you're playing live um, that, that I'll describe in a second. I like to set multiple macro controls so that I have more control over them and the only thing with that is then you can have to remember to automate all of them at the same time within your DAW so um, but let's do it that way and that will that will give you a better picture of, of what we're talking about so I'm gonna call um, uh, I'm probably not gonna be using any vibrato so uh, let's just remove this so we have plenty of room I'm going to uh, turn off this modulation here. So let's change uh, macro control number one to decay. And we're going to go back into the um, to our fourth envelope. And we're going to set this to the decay level, to the, to the decay time. And uh, create a nice range all the way up to maybe about almost to the end. Same, and then um, we're going to do the same thing with the release. So I'm going to put in release here. And I'm going to assign that to the release button, to the release knob of the envelope. And I'm going to create a nice big range. Don't go all the way to the end, because then the sound will never stop. But uh, maybe to right about there or so. Um, I'm also going to assign macro control number one to this level knob and I'm going to increase that all the way because in effect we're going to have both of these moving at the same time to accomplish the same effect. And number three we can change to noise and we can assign number three to the amplitude in our noise section and just create a full range like that. So now what's happening? Well we play our, our, our lead here. I want a little bit less reverb. We have a cool plucky kind of sound. But if I increase my decay time, you can hear how I can... Um, I can uh, 
have that decay knob and the level knob increase on my envelope. So instead of this plucky sound, and I can play with that like that. I can also in my uh, automate in my um, in my DAW, I would want to increase the release or automate these at the same time. Or if I'm using the keyboard, I would want the release to go up and the decay. So I have a nice release like that. And then I would also probably bring up this noise. So that adds that sort of nice, bright, um, uh, swishy kind of sound to your lead sound. Now, there are many other things that you can do as well. I can set up, uh, for example, a daft filter. And I can turn my cutoff all the way up. so you can create some cool movement that way. Also, if you want to change this translate and make it a little bit more hardcore, you can, um, as I mentioned, increase this unisono pitch cutoff spread. You can also use this pan position to um, to create a stereo spread with your with your uh, unisono voices. Like that. I actually I'm not too crazy about how that sounds. You can set up a band reject filter here and increase the output of filter number two and then uh, add in a little bit of filter two in your mix and then you can use an LFO to modulate this bandwidth, maybe like this, and use this sawtooth wave to have it sort of fall in a more linear fashion. <laughs> that sort of sound. Obviously, there are many adjustments that you can make to um, fine-tune this sound and create your own unique trance style lead, but this is just a good starting point to um, get that common classic sound going and then add your own spin on it. So go ahead and work with that. We'll see you in the next lecture. <laughs>